Today, you're going to learn how to build an authority website. So what I'm going to do is walk you through the entire process from start to finish. So you have a clear plan of action that you can implement. So let's get down into today's lesson. But before we begin, why should you build an authority website? Well, it's probably the best way to generate long term passive income. So if you are serious about building an Internet business, authority sites are absolutely the way to go because they will last for years and years. They will bring in visitors and traffic for years and years and they will generate revenue passively automatically for years and years. It's kind of a no brainer when you think about it. But they do take a lot of work. It takes time to build these, but I'm going to help you shorten that process so you can get results faster. However, you still have to put in the work. This is not one of those click button solutions that doesn't really exist. So that's why we build an authority website is to make long term passive income. So follow along with me today. What I want you to do is copy what I do make it relevant to your niche. So by the end of today's lesson, you really are in a good position when it comes to building an authority website. So point and click where I do. All you have to do is mimic my on screen actions to uncover the right type of data. Listen, it all starts with research because we have two options, don't we? So we can just dive headfirst into it and attempt to build an authority website. And that's how I've done it in the past. I've done it both ways. So we can dive into it without doing any type of research. And then we can spend the next three years feeling frustrated and confused and wondering why things are not working. So what I want to do today is save you from that hassle, from that struggle. Instead, we're going to focus a lot on building the right plan first. So you know exactly where to go. So point and click where I point and click my mouse. You'll be good. You will get the data you need. So let's do this together in real time. Let's not mess around with this. We are, we are actually starting the process from scratch today. I know that the thought of building an authority website can be daunting. But listen, we all start from scratch. We all start at the same place. Let me show you something. So in I think it was 2004, I began working with someone who is very well known. Now, his name is David Icke. You may be familiar with his website. You may be familiar with his books and his DVDs. He is the world's leading conspiracy theorist. So in 2004, I began working with David. And what I want to show you is even how someone with such a massive following, such a massive Internet presence can start from practically zero. So here we are in the Internet Archive. It's the Wayback Machine. I'm going to type in his website address. And what we're going to do is have a look at his website historically. So here you can see he started his website in 1998, 1999. It became a bit more active. So if we click on this, Let's go to one of these snapshots so we can see what the website looked like. Oops, it wasn't even working properly in 1999. So let's go to 2000 and click on one of these snapshots. And we, we should be able to see what his website looked like in the year 2000. And that is David Icke. There you can see that we, we really don't have that much going on on the website It is far from an authority website. And here you can see through the years how things have changed. So 2004, that's when I started working with David. Let's jump ahead to 2009. So relatively recently, let's have a look at how his website looks these days. So we've looked at where he started. Let's have a look at where it is now. There you can see these days it is absolutely an authority website. When it comes to conspiracy theories, this guy is crushing it. He is one of the main players globally. Look at his website now. It is phenomenal. He has put in so much work into this. His team has done so well. 
to get it to this level. It is amazing. And let's verify that it is actually one of the most popular websites on the planet. If we go to similar web, let's type in davidike.com and we should see a rough estimate of his traffic. So there it is got over 600,000 visits a month, dips, dips down slightly. In fact, I know that this isn't accurate. I know for a fact he gets a lot more than this is reporting, but there you can verify that it is a very high traffic website. And not only that, let's think about another massive website. Shall we say something like Lifehacker? And we type in lifehacker.com. And we can do this with practically any website. So let's go to 2005. Let's choose one of these snapshots at random. And it's going to show us what this website looked like when it first started. I'm showing you this data so you can see for yourself that everyone starts at the same place. Everyone starts at zero. And here you can see Lifehacker. We all know Lifehacker now. It's a massive website. There you can see that it was really nothing. It was just a normal looking blog. Nothing particularly special about it. Even the categories aren't that extensive. But if we have a look at Lifehacker now, everyone knows this site now. And there you can see it's absolutely an authority website. It is huge. So that should make it very clear to you that you can do this too, if you're willing to put in the work. And today I'm going to walk you through what that work needs to be. And it all starts with having the right research. And you will need to take notes. So open up Notepad or Word, get some way to take notes because we're going to copy and paste data and results from one page into some notes that we're going to use to really build this authority website. So open up Notepad now. Go ahead to so strike while the iron is hot, as they say. I also want you to open up a new browser window. This is really important that it's not a tab. So open up a brand new separate window. So you have my lesson in one and then the steps we're going to take in another. So we are going to be using a tool for this. There's a link in the description. What I want you to do right now before you do anything else is go ahead click on that link. It's going to take you to this page. I'll show you the page. It's a free trial. You absolutely need to use the free trial. I'll show you why in a few minutes. So it's going to take you to this page where good marketers become great. And then you have a button here. It says get seven day trial. Click that sign up for it because this tool is going to be essential to our progress today. There is no alternative with this. We absolutely have to use the pro version of SEM Rush. There is no alternative. There's no way around it. If you don't want to upgrade to the pro version, you don't have to, but you do need to get that trial to make this lesson work. Because as I said, everything starts with the right research and this is going to give us so much data. It's going to map out the entire plan for us. So you need that. But you don't have to spend money if you don't want to. The free, the free trial is more than adequate. So pause this lesson if you need to. Let's dive in to the lesson. So today you are going to learn how I lost four grand a month by making a stupid mistake. So you can hopefully avoid making that same mistake too. So what happened was I built this authority website. I mean, this goes back to 2003, 2004. I built an authority website. It got around 4 million visitors a month, but I hadn't monetized it properly. My monetization method was Google AdSense. And that was great for a while because for a few years, maybe four years, 100% of my income was being made from Google AdSense. Life was good. I was making between three grand and four grand a month. And I thought I'd made it. Now, something happened that changed everything because the Google algorithm changed. 
and that impacted my site ranking, it impacted my earnings and what happened as a result was all my income that I was making from Google AdSense was slashed. It was it dropped so low, I really had to struggle and find an alternative way to monetize my website, which is how I discovered affiliate marketing. So up until that point, I had put all my eggs in one basket. I failed to diversify my traffic sources and my income streams, and I paid the price for it. And I want you to avoid making that same mistake. So diversity is key. Another mistake I made was not treating it as a business, not really putting the money first. So I had built this authority website completely out of my passion and I thought that would be enough, but it wasn't. We need the passion. You have to have that. But we also have to have a business brain. So we need to focus on the money we need to make sure that everything we do with our authority websites is geared towards making as much money as possible. Some of the ways that you can monetize your authority website is through services. You can offer services to clients. You can run adverts, so CPM, CPA. You can do affiliate marketing. You can run sponsorships or you can create and sell your own products. Now, I have done each of these and in my experience, affiliate marketing and selling your own products are by far the most lucrative. So once we know how we're going to monetize our website, we need to choose the right niche. So I, I put making money before choosing the right niche because you need to have an idea how to monetize it. So the money always comes first, always follow the money. And when it comes to choosing the right niche, it really doesn't matter too much anymore because practically every niche out there has been successfully monetized now. So if we go back 10 years, it wasn't the case. Choosing the niche back then was very important. But still today we have people selling courses that insist you need to choose either the health niche, or the wealth niche, or the sex niche to profit online. That's not true anymore. You can absolutely run with your passions. However, you need to niche, niche down to a specific audience. So what does that mean? Well, you need to have some credibility. So you need to have some experience and know exactly who your audience is. So if you were in let's say the guitar niche, you might want to build a site all about different types of guitars. Now that is going to be more difficult to establish yourself in to be, as, as an authority figure than say just focusing on Les Paul custom guitars. If you focus on that, then you become the guy for Les Paul custom guitars. And that is your authority. It's the same with any website. So you might be tempted to create and a digital marketing authority website. And you might well be able to do that, but it's going to be much more difficult for you to be known as the digital marketing guy than it is to become, say, the, face, the Facebook ads guy. So niche down to a very specific audience. That is your starting point. And then we, we spread out as time goes on. As we establish authority in one niche, really at the niche level, then we can bring in another niche that is closely related. And that's how we build an authority website. I'm going to walk you through the site structure in a little while. But whatever niche you choose, you do have to have some credibility. You need to have some results that you can show, that you can demonstrate that you know what you're talking about. Or if you're just going purely on passion, you can borrow credibility. And we do that by interviewing experts. We bring them onto our website. If we don't have the credibility and the authority ourselves, we can borrow it from other people. That's perfectly fine because we're still delivering awesome value to our audiences at the end of the day. But no matter which path you choose to either 
show your own credibility or someone else's or a mix of the two, you absolutely need to have your, your, your own unique voice. There is no getting out of that. You need to have your unique voice, something that separates you from everyone else. So you have to have your own opinions in the content. We can't just take zombie content and expect to do well with that because we sound like everyone else. So we need to separate ourselves. So also today we're going to look at competitor research. This is vital. You really have to do this right. That's why I'm recommending that you sign up for that trial version of SEM Rush. There is nothing else that's going to give you the same kind of data. We're also going to use it to generate lots of content ideas. That's very important because we need to know what type of content works so we know what type of content to make. Then I'm going to show you that site structure. We're going to spend a little bit of time on that. Then we're going to talk about your publishing schedule for maximum results. And it all comes down to being consistent. If you don't have consistency, you're not going to do too well. Then finally, we're going to look at building an email list based around a funnel. This is really how you make the money. Now, I want you to go down to the link in the, the description, sign up for that free trial. You don't have to spend any money if you don't want to, but you do absolutely have to use that tool because we are going to use that to uncover so much data. So let's go ahead and dive into SEM Rush. So let's go ahead and start the competitor analysis. So when you sign up from the link below, you'll get this dashboard. It should look something similar to this. And you'll notice on the left hand side, we have got a whole heap of options. For example, if we click that, it's going to drop down another menu. If we click that, it's going to give us more. So this can be fairly overwhelming. But what I want you to do is just focus on what I do and don't worry about the rest of the options. So I want you to click all tools up here. I want you to go to competitive research toolkit. Click on that. And now we have fewer options, which, which makes this platform easier to use. So I want you to click on Market Explorer. That's the very first starting point. Now I want you to think about your main competitors. You probably have an idea of the big authority websites in your niche. So just for the sake of demonstration to show you how to do this, I'm going to go with Search Engine Journal because it is a digital marketing website. It's probably one of the biggest SEO websites. So if we click that and put in Search Engine Journal into the Market Explorer, what it's going to do is bring back a load of competitors, sites that it believes is the main competition. And these are going to be relevant sites. So here in this list, we can see that it's got sites like Ahrefs, SEM Rush, Neil Patel, SEO Clerk, loads of other websites that are relevant. However, we can narrow the focus because here all market, it gives us 3,745 results. That's far too many to go through. So if we click narrow focus, it's going to make our life even easier. So here it's going to list out ones like HubSpot, Hootsuite, small SEO tools, Buffer, Ahrefs. These are more relevant to the main website that we're analyzing. So in addition to that, in addition to this list that it's brought back, we can click on relevant sites. And here it's going to bring back detailed analytics so we can see which ones have the most traffic. We can order this in terms of highest traffic websites or least highest lowest traffic websites. If we click total traffic. There we can see that HubSpot is number one. We can see the different types of traffic that HubSpot gets as well. So what we need to do is grab that notepad that I mentioned earlier. And we can take a note of say HubSpot. So we can add that to the list. Or we can use the export 
So we can push this out as a spreadsheet if we want to. However, I'm not going to do that because I want to make this tutorial as quick and easy as possible. So what we're going to do is just take some of these that I know are relevant to SEO and add them to my list. So now we have a list. I'm just going to add five or six, but I want you to get as much data as you can. It will probably be more beneficial for you to export this as a, as a file. So now that we have a list, we can go to traffic analytics. So here we can see what kind of traffic levels our competitors are experiencing. So here it will give you the traffic sources so you'll know how they're driving traffic. So if we're looking at search engine journal, we can see that most of their traffic, surprise, surprise, comes from search engines. There we can see that most of their visitors comes from the United States. So if we were to emulate some of what these guys are doing, we should expect in time, of course it's not going to happen overnight, but in time we should really expect to see similar results. There we can go through lots of different options here. So audience overlap, if we want to compare them to, let's say, one of our other competitors. So let's say social media examiner. If we take that and add there, we can compare them. We can add more if we want to, but this will give us an idea of the audience overlap. Let's add some more, shall we? So we can get more data. So the more data you, you, you add to SEM rush, the more results you get, the more accurate things are going to be. And that's why I really, really do encourage you to get that trial because it's going to improve your website in the long run. So let's add quick sprout and also add backlink co let's compare them all. So you can see that there is about 7% of people who use search engine journal also use social media examiner. There we can see with SE round table, it's less, even less with quick sprout and then fewer still with backlink up there you can drill down and see if they have similar audiences. So we might want to put in, maybe change it to Moz because I reckon Moz.com, I reckon they're going to have similar audiences. So there you can see 20%. Now it's jumped up from 7% to 20% because we've changed it to Moz. So do th take the time to go through all your competitors, get as much information as you can. And really you want to see where the overlap is. So let's go to traffic sources. If we click on that, we can see that of the competitors that we've added in, Moz gets the most search engine traffic. And then for social, neither, neither are doing particularly well. And then there's practically zero paid traffic apart from Moz, which is 13,000. So take the time to have a look at, at the traffic sources in a bit more detail. This will help you uncover the strengths and weaknesses of your competition. So here it's listing over 300 sources. We can, if we just want to see which sites are linking and sending referral traffic to your competition, click that. And there you can see that these are possibly going to be some of the websites that you will want to get your content featured on. You will want to get links from here as well. The search engines that you need to be paying attention to, obviously Google, number one, Bing, and let's not forget about Yahoo, even DuckDuckGo is making an appearance there. And the social networks that are working for your competition are listed here. And we can see the usual suspects. And Twitter, t.co, t.co, that's the Twitter shortener. So you can see that that is responsible for 47% of the traffic share. So we know that Twitter might, might become a 
cornerstone of our strategy in terms of traffic generation for this type of website. Your competition, your niche sites, all that stuff is going to be very different. That's why you need to use this tool that is unique to you and your competition to get that data that is unique for you and your competition. So we can drill down even further to have a look at the top pages across the website. And if we if we want to see articles that are performing really well, we can just click on that. It will take us to these articles. So here we can see this piece of content, 14 great search engines you can use instead of Google. You can see that that is performing really well for search engine journal. So that could be an idea for content. We're actually going to come to content ideas in a second. But for right now, I want you to have a really good idea of who your competition are, what they're doing and why they are succeeding. So we, we, we're uncovering all that data. So you know where you should be pointing your gun at. You, you will know what you should be aiming at. So there we can go to geo distribu distribution. No surprise that USA dominates their destination sites. Google search engines, surprise, 3% internet marketing ninjas. That's a surprise there. Subdomains, we can see what else is going on. Bulk analysis. So if we want to add up to 200 domains, one per line, we can get that data there. So I might want to paste in that list that we generated earlier. So I can paste that in there. And uh, let's add Moz to the list as well. And then we can analyze. So that is handy. It's going to save you a bit of time. Let's go back to um, this section. So back in competitive research toolkit, if we go to backlink gap, click on that. This is going to give you some backlink opportunities. This is powerful. So read what it says. It says how it works. Compare domains Enter your and your competitors domains. We will analyze these websites backlink profiles and discover untapped backlink opportunities. Receive domains to target. You will receive a list of domains to target in your link building campaign. So this is going to help improve your overall SEO. It's going to help drive traffic to your website. So let's add some competitors here. So let's say moz.com search engine journal. Look at that. It's even giving us a list of potential competitors. Let's go with that. Then click find prospects. This is really interesting. So it's showing that search engine land has got the, the highest number of backlinks by, by quite a lot. And if we have a look and there we can see which sites are linking to the sites we have listed here. So we have a look through this data, it's going to present some really good opportunities for us because we know if they're if these guys are linking out to, to these websites and we have a similar website, there are chances that they might want to link to our content as well. So we can change how this is structured. So if we click on matches, that's going to change the way we see things. Click it. Oh, look. Here. So it gives us less known, smaller websites that are linking. So these are opportunities that we might want to dip into. Again, if we click matches again, it's going to change how it's structured there. So there we can see that, for example, Moz, well, Moz is, is linking out an awful lot to Search Engine Journal, to Neil Patel, to Kiss Metrics and to search engine land. Think with Google could be good, a uh, good one to, to go for digital trends. So this is going to give us a load of backlinking data that we can use when it comes to actually marketing our content. But how do we write that content? How do we create 
content that is going to pull in traffic. Well, back at the dashboard, if we go to topic research, if we click on that, here we can type in a topic that it's going to generate content ideas for. So it says we analyze your rival's content and give you ideas to write winning content. So we can have a look at ones I've previously looked for. So let's say we're in the digital marketing space. We can search for digital marketing ideas and here it's gonna bring back content from Google Ads. If we click on that, it's gonna show us the copy that is being used in Google Ads under this key phrase. If we wanna find news, there we can see the best performing headlines cut on topic ideas performing there. If we want to drill down into affiliate marketing, click on that and there are more content ideas. This is all proven to work. This is popular content. So there we can drill right down into different areas of our niche. So say social media marketing, we might want to go with something like top social media marketing companies. That's a long tail key phrase. So that could be a really good one to use. Here it's presenting questions. This, this is what people are asking, the content that is going to answer those questions. So we're really drilling down into the niche, the long tail niche level. So we could take a few of these. So let's say, top social media marketing companies. We could take that, make a note of it. If we choose another one. So let's say, what is the purpose of digital marketing on social media? We could grab that, take a note of that too. And what is social media marketing? Grab that. And now we can go check out the search volume. So let's go to seo toolkit click on that and then we go to keyword over overview and let's take something from our list so social media marketing maybe we take that add that in and search so it's going to show us the organic search volume the CPC distribution, We're going to look at trends. It's got keyword suggestions. So 31,000 keyword suggestions. And here it's bringing back phrase match keywords, 31,000. We can export all these if we want. It also gives us the search volume and the cost per click, the related keywords, which is over 2000. It's going to show us the organic search results. So this is what's happening on the front page of Google. We can see the ads history for these keywords. So let's go get some keyword suggestions. If we click on that, it's going to take us to the keyword magic tool. So check this out. This is amazing. So it's going to show us the keywords here with the search volume. So really we want to find long tail keywords that have got at least a thousand searches per month. So the volume has to be over a thousand. Now, if it's up here in the region of 40,000, social media marketing is gonna be such a difficult one to, uh, to rank for. So we wanna stay down here in around a thousand to 2000. So for example, social media marketing world, that could be one uh, to consider. We also want to take note of the cost per click, because the more expensive the cost per click, the harder it is to rank. So Google gives us clues like that, but this will give us the competition density. So there you can see social media marketing books, that is the most difficult to rank for, but the search volume is relatively low. So <laughs> what you have to do is find the right balance. And that is going to vary from niche to niche. So this, so 0.20, that is going to be relatively easy to rank for. However, the search volume is a lot lower, but the cost per click is, well, that's $4.29, $4 which on this list 
isn't that bad. I think the lowest one that we can see there is social media marketing job description, which is just over two bucks. And it has a low competition too, but the search volume is low. So I'm going to leave it to you to explore this page and decide for yourself what long tail key phrases you should be searching or using for your content. Okay, before we exit this tool and get on with the rest of the tutorial, I want to give you a little bit of a bonus here because although we briefly touched on discovering backlink opportunities, I want to take a bit of a deep dive and help you uncover very specific backlink opportunities. So here on the left hand side, if we click on backlink analytics, let's enter in our main competition here. We're going to add in a few more competitors. So let's say social media examiner, that could be one, add up to three content. Let's go with Mars. Let's choose another one, search engine land and marketing land. And now we compare. So what it's going to do is give us a whole heap of data that we can use. So there we can see that search engine land again is dominating things. We can see what type of links is really driving the traffic here. So search engine land text text seems to be really important. No surprise there. And there we can see the referring domains where they're getting the traffic from the link attributions. We can see that for search engine journal, they're getting a load of 90% of follow Moz gets about 50, 50. So 45% and no follow for Moz. But if we go to backlinks, click on that here, we can see exactly who is linking to these websites. So we can list it for, for all the domains. We can choose one, two to 10. We can choose all links, just follow, no follow sponsored. This is such a useful tool to have. And really you need, you need the free trial or the pro version to uncover all this data. So it gives you everything you need. So if you're creating content that you, you know is in demand that people want, and it's similar to these big authority sites, now you know where to get traffic from. So you know who will be interested in linking to your content. If we click on anchors, you're going to see the actual anchor text that other sites are using when they're linking to your competition. We can see the referring domains. So it makes it really simple, really easy for us to just say, yep, that's the website we need to talk to. And we can again export this list. So you really don't have any excuse to not succeed with your authority website. Okay. So now we've done our research. We've got our content ideas. We have a clear plan of action. How do we implement this stuff? What do we do with the data we have just uncovered? Well, let's talk about the site navigation structure. So this is how we build the site. This is all about the starting points. So we're going to build it from the ground up. So we start with homepage navigation. This is obvious. And then we choose our main niche. Let's say we're going with SEO. So we want to build an SEO authority site. Then we would add another section. So it could be social media marketing because it's closely related to SEO and then perhaps a pay per click section or an advertising section. So these are all closely related topics to the main topic of SEO or digital marketing. If we were building a digital marketing website. So what we do now is we take one of these topics, let's say SEO and we do a deep dive. So we bring in more sections. So here we add additional topics that fall under the umbrella of SEO. So link building could be one keywords could be one on page SEO off page SEO. These could be all subtopics of SEO. And then we would repeat it again for social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. So this could be a very loose map. And we would create content that is relevant to these topics. And we, we really only focus on a handful of topics at the moment. 
but then we can drill down even further. So for example, if we're talking about link building, we can focus on inbound link building and outbound link building. So we could have articles about those two. So what we're really doing here is taking one or two topics and going really deep. We're taking a massive deep dive into SEO, or if we're looking at social media marketing, we could take a deep dive into Facebook marketing, examining reach, metrics, that kind of thing. So that's the structure that we would use. So it's multi-tiered. So to ex explain it another way, let's say our, our main topic is fruit and a food website. Let's say the subtopic is going to be apples and then the niche topic is jazz apples. So you see how that flows. So main topic, fruit, subtopic, apples, niche topic, jazz apples. That's how you will structure an authority website. It's very simple when we break it down like this. So you will focus on one of those topics and go deep. You will create a whole heap of content just on that topic. So what about creating that, that content? Here is the publishing schedule that you will use. This is proven to work. It is work and it only works if you do, but it does work. So. We do a 90 day content creation challenge. I said it was going to be work. So we create one piece of content every single day for 90 days without fail. If we do happen to miss a day, then we start it over. It's a challenge. We need to challenge ourselves to do this. And we ignore the metrics for now. So make sure that you have Google Analytics installed, Google uh, Search Console installed as well but we don't pay much attention to them. Instead, we just focus on creating high value content that is optimized for search engines. And granted, we're not gonna get much SEO traffic in the beginning, but we are thinking two or three years down the road. We still want to get results from that, that work we put in today. So that's why we think about creating high value optimized content. So we deliver value to the reader and we also deliver value to the search engines too. Don't use PLR content. There is a place for that. There's a time and place for PLR, but it's not on the front end. We can use PLR in email sequences if we want to. So avoid the, the temptation to use PLR content or zombie content. And when you do this right, when you're creating a fresh piece of content every single day for 90 days, it puts you in the mindset of a content creator. Now, me personally, I didn't believe I had the ability to create content on a consistent basis until I did a 90 day content creation challenge, which is all thanks to Miles, because without his advice, I wouldn't have believed that I could do it too. And things changed when I did my 90 day content creation challenge. I found that I actually really enjoyed creating content after the first week or so, after I got over the nerves and the self doubt, and I actually got some discipline and knuckled down and did the work. I found it was a great deal of fun. And I obviously stuck with it now where I'm creating content on a very regular basis. So we use the 90 days to gather more data about your content and about your website. So that, when we look at the metrics, we don't look at the metrics until 90 days and then we find what works. So we use that data. We look at what is working, the traffic sources that are working, the types of content that's working to guide your next 90 days. And then after 90 days, you can lower your publishing frequency so you can drop it down to say three times a week. Once a week it has to be at least once a week, no less than that but you can drop it down really to as much as you want, as long as it doesn't go below once a week. And Cam Jennings said this once, and I'm, I'm completely taking what he said because it's true. He said, imagine each, each piece of content is like a fishing line. So you, you have multiple lines out there trying to catch multiple fish and the lead magnet that you use, which we'll get to in a few minutes, when it comes to building funnels, but the lead magnet is like the bait. So we use this fishing line with a piece of bait, pull them in, get them on board. And the more fishing lines that you have, the more fish you catch. 
So each piece of content is like a fishing line. So if you have 52 pieces of content because you're publishing once a, once a week, 52 pieces of content is going to pull in 52 fish a day, you would hope, at a bare minimum. And that's how it goes. So what about that funnel structure? Because this is really important. Well, let's say we are focusing on SEO articles and nothing else for the moment. So we're taking a deep dive into SEO. We're creating lots of SEO related content. Well, we're going to need a specific lead magnet for SEO and nothing else. So this is an uh, imagine this as a category on your website. Like if we go back to the the navigation that we looked at, we had SEO there. So for each one of these categories, we have a separate lead magnet. So let me go back down to this. So imagine category is full of SEO articles. So that means we need a lead magnet for SEO. And we have the same lead magnet on all articles that are relevant to SEO. And then we pull those people who subscribe to that lead magnet into an SEO relevant email list. Now, it doesn't mean you need to have lots of different email lists set up. You can do it through tagging. So you can have one list, one master list, and then segment through tagging. And then when they're subscribed to the list, this is a good structure to follow when you want to make money. So day one, we send them an educational email, build trust, help them out, deliver value. Day two, we send them an inspirational email. We let them know that they can do it too, that it is within their grasp. And then on day three, we sell them something. So days one and two, we give them lots of awesome value. Day three, we say, hey, if, if you want to go more advanced with this, this is the product to buy. So that's a good structure to use. And then we repeat the whole process for social articles. So just like we had previously, remember the site structure, another topic was social. So if we have articles all about social media marketing, we need a lead magnet dedicated to social media and then a separate email list or tag for social media people and then we do the same type of email sequence and then we repeat it again for the other category and the articles within that category for PC, PPC, P, PCP, <laughs> it's a completely different niche. So if we were doing PPC articles, there you would have a different lead magnet, different email list or different tag, but again, the same type of emails that ultimately end up in you selling something. So that's how you make money from an authority website. In addition to ads and sponsorships, services, all that good stuff. But the real profit is going to be made via your email list. So that's how you build out these funnels. But for them to really work, you need traffic, don't you? You need to, to drive this forward because if you don't have traffic, no one's buying. So how do you get traffic? And it is really important that you do get traffic because without this, you won't make any money. Traffic equals money. Sorry, targeted traffic equals money. So it has to be very specific traffic. Well, I'm going to show you how to get traffic. I'm going to show you how to get an unlimited amount of highly targeted traffic. So you do make money and I'm going to show you for free. So the methods that I teach you can be implemented for free and the education I give you to show you how to do it is also going to be free when you go to profitcopilot.com slash traffic. Grab that. It won't cost you a penny. And if you found this useful, give it a thumbs up below. Subscribe to the channel too and hit that little notification bell so you never miss an update from me. And I will hopefully see you again in a couple of days time. Take care.